Hi, Alan Irwin again from Santa Barbara Infrared. In this video, we're going to be talking about the signal transfer function, typically referred to as the SITF, although you'll hear some people call it SITF. You won't hear me call it SITF, but some people will refer to it as that. So what does SITF measure? SITF measures the response of a camera. It looks at the brightness of the output, the output signal, based on how much temperature is being presented to it, the input signal. So that's pretty much what we're measuring, is the amount of signal output based on the amount of temperature input. Now, what we've got up here is a graph, the typical SITF response graph. And you'll see that it sort of looks like an S, and so it's referred to as an S curve. Now, let's look at the first part of that curve. In the lower left of the curve, you'll see that it's flat. We have a flat region, and that's because there's not enough temperature change to actually stimulate the camera. In the upper right, what we see is the response of the camera when there's so much temperature, we've saturated the sensor. So it doesn't vary anymore as we add more temperature. What's important is that middle region. And the middle region, you'll see that it's a straight response. It's referred to as the linear region or the linear response of the camera. And it's the slope of the curve at this point that's important to us. That is the SITF measurement, that slope of that curve. So, what do you need to actually perform this test? You need something to stimulate the camera and something to measure the output. And we stimulate the camera with a black body, typically. A black body is a calibrated instrument that produces a known temperature based on what our settings are, and we can precisely tell you what the temperature is of the black body. So that's our stimulus to the camera. And typically we measure in modern cameras the output using a frame grabber, a device that can take the measurements from the sensor and produce a series of numbers or A to D converter values that gives us the raw measurement from the sensor itself when it's being presented with temperature. Now the configuration or the layout we have in this slide is referred to as a flood configuration where we take the black body, we put it right up against the camera, and we use that output temperature to stimulate the camera. We know or can measure what the output of the black body is, we look at the response of the camera, and we take our measurement. Now in some laboratories there is a more involved setup where we've got a uh, scene projection system or a target projection system. And here what we have are some optics that are used more commonly for other parts of testing, but can still be used in an SITF configuration. What we're trying to do is stimulate that camera, present it a temperature that we know, and measure the output, typically with a, with a computer or some other system that's taking measurements from the camera. So this is the output of the camera, what you would expect to see in a system where we're stimulating it. And you can see that there's a circular aperture, and half of it is filled with the temperature of the black body. That's the bright region here. And that bright region is the response of the camera to the black body temperature. The darker part is the part of the what's presented to the camera that's being held at the temperature of the room. So what we're saying is that we are interested in the differential temperature, the difference between the temperature of the background and the part, the black body that's presented, uh, presenting to the camera. And then we're going to look at the camera's response in those two regions to look at the difference in stimulation or difference in uh, the signal output. And it's that measurement of the amount of temperature difference we're presenting to the camera and the amount of signal response from the camera that gives us a point in our graph. And we're going to do a series of those. So for setting up this test, what we're going to do is define a set of range temperature measurements. We're going to go from, say, minus 5 to plus 5 differential temperature. And we're going to do it in half degree increments or maybe tenth degree increments and step through each of those temperatures and take measurements from the, uh, from the camera. So here what we've got is that first measurement. And you can see that the temperature is lower than the background, so it appears dark. Now we're going to be going through, and we'll just step through a couple of these images so that you can see how it varies. And as we go up in temperature, we will see a brighter and brighter set of images. There's a point where the background temperature matches the temperature of the black body, so it looks like one big gray image. And finally, we get to where we're at a higher temperature than the background. The camera responds with a brighter and brighter image. And that's pretty much what our measurement series is. And we graph those, like we see here, with an S-curve, where each point on that graph is a measurement taken from stimulating the camera and looking at its response. So that important region in the middle is where we're taking our measurement and looking at that slope to calculate our SITF. Some other things you can do with the measurement is that we look at the operating range of the camera, right? We know when the camera doesn't get enough temperature to stimulate it, when it starts to get enough temperature to stimulate it, and then we know where it starts to saturate. So that region of interest, that range of temperatures where we know the camera can respond properly, that's our temperature range, our operating range on the camera. And the other thing that we can do is 
calculate something called dynamic range, where that operating range of the camera is important, but the other piece that we need is the noise, and we're going to be talking about the noise in the next video, so we'll hold off on dynamic range until we get there. So, why are we doing SITF on this camera at all? Well, one of the important things we need to do with a camera is characterize it. In fact, when people ask me what's the first thing I should do with a camera, the test I start with is typically SITF, because that tells me what the operating range of the camera is, what its linear response, I know where I should be doing other tests in terms of the temperature difference. It's a very important test for giving, giving me an overall characterization of that camera, especially when I know nothing about it going in. We also use it to calibrate cameras, because as I take multiple cameras, I can see what their measured slopes are. I can provide a correction factor so that they all come up with the same slope output measurement. I can calibrate those cameras. And finally, I can use it for detecting failures, because if I have an expectation of what that slope is, and I'm way out of that range, I know there's something wrong, and I can fail the camera. We use this test when we're looking at multiple cameras in the same production line. So as long as I know what the overall characteristics of the camera are supposed to be, same model, same production line, I can use SITF to compare those cameras. I can't really use it when looking at different cameras, because every camera's got a different way of doing its electronic output, uh, amplifiers, it's the sensor that it's using. So it's never really used as a way of comparing cameras from different production lines or different models or different manufacturers. That's other tests are used for, and so we'll get to those later. But that pretty much covers an introduction to SITF.